seed here so they're very nice and the we take the eggs to the hatchery of course because the, we know that the the chicks will be eaten by the bigger beds the the, the emus mm. like that one there those eat those beds are called what emu ah okay they're not ostriches no they're no in the family of ostriches yeah there's one ostrich here but that's the emu okay that one there and this one here and the then what? Oh, these are the ducks. Mm -hmm. uh, ducks there. Yeah. Uh, but they're beautiful to watch. Yeah. And the... Emus are not indigenous. No, no. Emus are indigenous. They get them from uh, Namibia, Botswana, South Africa. Ah, so they're African. Just like the ostriches, they're, they're African. Because it's like, it's like the Indian. This antelope, the one with dots, yes, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, that was brought into Zambia by Dr. Kaunda. Mm -hmm. You know that yes. uh, mm -hmm. they've, uh, they've cast home and so on. And there's a boy who has brought in camels, mm -hmm. they're doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. camels, eh? mm -hmm. ah, okay, they're doing okay. pretty well. In, in, the, no, in, in Kenya, I found President Uhuru Kenyatta had 1,000 of them, Camel, huh? camels, yes. Mm -hmm. And he was saying he wanted to encourage the police to use them for patrolling the border between Somalia oh, and that area yeah, that and so area, on. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. area is very good for coming. Yeah, but they are very robust and durable animals. Yeah. One of the things we are also growing here of interest is uh, this one, this dragon fruit. No, Your Excellency, you got mm. someone who mm. immediately said, yeah, I've got a job here. Mm. I've got a peace worker. Yeah, yeah, dragon fruit. What peace worker have you got? <laughs> mm. What are these? What is this? It's a dragon fruit. Oh, it's a dragon fruit. Mm. Mm. So it's very. So uh, I can earn some little money here to come and do some fish work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, we established the orchard. Just experimenting them here. Yeah. No, but the experiment uh, mm. needs me. Yeah, but the, the workers are excited. Oh, everyone here is excited because we had some fruit mm. and we tested them. When the... From this? Yes, yeah. just from here. Uh, you have plenty of this. Well, I'm. Mm. <laughs> it's an orchard for I'm, 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 I'm an agriculturist. Mm. <laughs> and, and you know they're very expensive. One one fruit, like a mango, costs you about 70 kwacha. Wow. 80 kwacha. You go to some of these uh, uh, exclusive sh shopping right. areas. Melissa has them, and you have. And I was surprised. When I went through Google, I now know a bit more than I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and we have them um, in the morning. They make what you call a smoothie. Yeah. Mm, oh. Very nice. And so, yeah, antioxidants and so. Okay, very nice. We may just. I should write a proposal. Yeah. Yeah. These uh -huh. leaders are. Listen to this. Listen to this. Yeah. I write a proposal so I can come and do some. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And get yeah. some uh, okay. agricultural practice for you for dragon yeah. fruit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because uh, I've seen that uh, uh, the people have been uh, assisting. Uh, may not have a full no, no, we, we are learning. Of what is supposed to be. It's learning, <laughs> learning on job, <laughs> job on training. You know, we, we, we just got them, and the, yeah. the, fruit, the fruit will only come on, on this one. Uh, this one will have fruit. We, we've had fruit. Mm. We've had fruit here before. It must have been a blended leaf. Yeah, and the. These ones were going up like No, this. these. Uh, will never have fruit. Mm. They they dispose of. They're supposed to buttress. Yeah, they. Once they, they buttress, then they start fruiting. Yeah. As uh, long as they're growing like that, they just become you, thin, you, you, and thin and thin and thin. And thin. You get to a level where you get a trellis. Yes. Where oh, they go in there and they begin. Exactly. Like From a, an umbrella. An umbrella. Yes, exactly. Ah. Uh -huh. okay. Is this supposed to be an attempt to get it to that height and? 
No, these were brought already from the nursery. They had overgrown. So instead of going to waste, we said, let's just grow them around here and excite the population, excite the people here to learn about them. Because some of them ate them for the first time here. Oh. Some of them saw them for the first time here. And all these workers here know about them. But then knowledge is deficient. Uh -huh. So, but some of us have gone to Uncle Google. Yeah. <laughs> we picked a lot of knowledge and so on. They come in various colors. Yeah? There is the red one, yellow, the yellow one, pink, white. red. Beautiful. Oh. When you open it and so on. By the way, the skin, uh, I discovered that is also useful, very nice. So, when they were making the drink, they used to remove the skin, the peel. But now, Use they use it, they grind it together, and it's a bit slimy, a bit slimy like dele, mm. like okra, mm. but very tasty. Mm. 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 So, but also, to be known is that uh, ordination yeah. is done only in the night. One night. Oh. One night only. Oh. The flowers come out only yes. one night. Mm -hmm. uh, in the they night, or in the morning, they begin wilting. If they're not pollinated, and the, and usually yeah. you'll be lucky. You miss a chance. Yes, that's it. But they're doing it commercially, yeah? Yes. Okay. <laughs> commercially, and there are people doing it in Zambia also. Mm -hmm. But this is... In the brush. Mm. Uh, yeah. In the torch at night. Yeah. yeah. It can be pollinated in the day. No. No, it's... The flower is not there in the day. It's mm. Mm. But in the morning, the early hours, you find lots of bees. That uh, some from bees. our initial discussion, Your Excellency, I can confirm that... Uh, our vice president has won the contract <laughs> <laughs> to manage the <laughs> well yeah, done. Yeah. It's a big 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 business. In, in Kenya it's big business, eh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Big business and so on. Quite a lot. Mm -hmm. No, we have a number of them, but we just hang them by the trees. They, on their own they don't uh, go up, they just collapse and yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you, Excellency. I will steal this from you, sir. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I forgot, I thought it was mine. Uh, <laughs> mm. Family, those that are um, joining us, we are at the residence of Zambia's sixth president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. You've seen that um, is flanked by leaders that quickly rushed to come and see him here. I will hand over the microphone to uh, our vice president of the party, Honorable Given Luvinda. Yes, sir, you can talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, those of you who are following us on social media. And uh, let me seize this opportunity to thank His Excellency President Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu for allowing my team to come to his residence uh, this afternoon. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, we came primarily to come and give His Excellency solidarity. On the 28th of October last year, when he decided to divorce himself from the trappings of former president, he did it for the sake of this party that we lead. He did it for the sake of Zambians. And naturally, when uh, we hear that there is anything that is happening to him which is inimical to his interests, it is our duty to stand by him because he is not an orphan at all. He is a leader of the largest political party in Zambia. And uh, Your Excellency would like to say, the statement that you made has come to be living testimony of what we have said all the time, that uh, the democratic space in Zambia is shrinking, that the freedom of expression in Zambia is uh, under uh, a guillotine, in this country, it seems like nobody is allowed to speak. Nobody is allowed to express themselves. Even rendering innocent and honest advice is becoming a criminal offense. When you said what you said, I was sitting opposite you. You advised that, please, police, behave yourselves, conduct yourselves in a civil manner, because what you are doing is risking bringing down the government. You did not say that the government will be brought down. You are advising the police to behave in a civil manner lest they risk the government's continued uh, operation. And the reaction that we read, first of all from 
Reha Monga was extremely, extremely surprising. That Reha Monga could even go to the extent of making a public statement where he's warning that your statement will be studied. What is there to study over that statement? What is it that wasn't clear in that statement? Maybe it was in French. Huh? <laughs> what was it in that statement that requires uh, analyzing? And what is it that you were saying that uh, legal consequences have to follow? What are the legal consequences of a person advising? Because it is your duty as a citizen to ensure that you give information to the state. When you think that there is a threat to our democracy, there is a threat to the continued stay of government, it is our duty as citizens to advise and say, watch out, something is wrong. Now, to even come and hear that uh, there are plans to have you arrested, no, that will not allow. And that is the reason why we have come. And I want to say to you, Excellency, that where we came from, we, your lieutenants, there are many others who are waiting. They all wanted to converge here, but we said, no, wait a minute. There is no reason for us to go and uh, besiege the president's residence. Let us, your leaders, just go there and give solidarity to him. But we'd like to take advantage of this to tell all our members. When I said... Just the day when Miles Sampa decided to declare himself president of the party with the support of Haga Inde Ijirema, I spoke at the secretariat and I said time had come for Zambians to rise and defend Zambia's democracy. There is no offense meant by that. We ought to rise and defend ourselves. Now, when you say that please police watch out because if you don't, the Zambians may rise, what is wrong with that? Every citizen has the duty to rise to defend themselves and to defend their democratic space. So it is true, we are going to rise in the event that this tendency of destroying our democracy continues. We are bound to rise. We may rise tomorrow, but we may also rise in 2026. When we go to vote, we'll rise and go and defend ourselves. There is nothing criminal about that. So, Your Excellency, we've come to assure you that... Uh, you are not alone in this. They touch you, they touch all of us. Yeah. And they must also be made aware that when I say all of us, I'm not talking only on behalf of the Patriotic Front. No, am I speaking only on behalf of UCA? I'm speaking on behalf of all the Zambians who have already awakened. The Zambians are awake. Zambians are UCA. Babuga. <laughs> Babuga. <laughs> so touch you, then they are touching all of us. As a matter of fact, Your Excellency, the same people who today are saying they want to study your statement, they want to have you arrested, we just have to ask them, just three years ago, when you were in State House, what kind of treacherous statements were being made by those who were in opposition then? Mm. Huh? Haga Inde himself, on several occasions, made statements that are worse than the statements that any of us have made ever since he became president. You never had him arrested. You never had the spokesperson of the police issuing threats the way Reha Monga has done. He made lots of statements. How many times did he refuse to even recognize your presidency? For us, we respect him. We recognize him as president. He was elected, yes. But we know the circumstances under which he was elected. Mm. We can actually dispute that, but we don't want to. Mm. We have allowed him free reign to govern until he proves himself a failure to the Zambian people okay. without, without our participation. Mm. And yet now, because we have give, given him this free reign, he is now going about it in a manner that shows the whole world that as a matter of fact, the Zambians made a very big mistake in 2021. And I can assure the Zambian people, I can assure Haga Inde Ejidema himself, that if he continues, and now I would like to borrow your words, but I'll just juxtapose them. You're if Haga Inde... I'll be very happy. <laughs> your Excellency, you'll be extremely happy to be co-accused, and I'd like that all of these, my colleagues, will be co-accused with you. Mm. The fact is, if Haga Inde does not watch the way that he is governing or misgoverning this country, the manner in which he is mistreating people, 
the manner in which he's diminishing political space. And if he continues to dance to his praise singers, who sing those praises only to his ears, when they turn their backs against him, they are telling us that as a matter of fact, he's a dictator then he himself is creating his own downfall. And if he's going to manage to go until 2026, God in heaven will be our witnesses because he is bound to fail even before 2026. So, Excellency, we are here with you. to what happened to Dr. Kaunda. He was elected, popular elected in 1988. Two years later, he was calling for fresh elections. Precisely. It has happened in many parts of the world. It was not only with Dr. Kaunda, but it's a good example because Dr. Kaunda had been president for 27 years mm. and he thought that he had gotten grip of the governance of this country. But the Zambians showed him that the power truly belongs to them, not to the people who occupy office. Mm. And I'm glad that you are saying that. So we can also remind this man's elder brother, mm. my friend, your elder brother, yeah, my yeah. friend, that the power that you have is borrowed power. The true power belongs to the Zambian people. And the Zambian people are watching you every step. The confusion that you have created in the patriotic front, sponsoring stooges to come and uh, cause confusion, that will be your downfall. But please, let go of Edgar Chagwalungu. He has given you space to govern. He respects you. He recognizes you. Each time he mentions your name, he says, President Hagainde Hijidema. For you, Hagainde, for as long as President Lungu was pre Republican president, you did not call him by the title president. You didn't want to even recognize him. Please give him some res respite. You know, he him, needs. I've, I've called him that guy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because he, he is indeed a guy, but he's president of Zambia, and you've recognized that. Uh, he, so, he's my president. yes, yeah. thank you very much, Your Excellency. We want to give you our total support thank and you, solidarity. Thank you, thank you, thank thank you, you sir. Much. Thank, thank you. you. President, much to Shindika. So, Shindika, we do a summary of events. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you to our dear viewers. We are at the residence of uh, the former president, uh, uh, Zambia's sixth president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. There were urgent reports that there were schemes and uh, attempts to have him arrested. We found him joyful. He's in his house. He was reading uh, some, some political books. He welcomed us. And um, the vice president has just spoken to the issues that uh, the president didn't commit any crime. The power of the people lie with Zambians. It doesn't lie with those that uh, uh, exercise it now. And we've demonstrated that if, um, for example, you don't run the economy well, you create a political crisis, there could be cause for fresh elections. It's not criminal to call for fresh elections. It's not criminal to say Zambians will vote you out. It's not criminal to, to literally criminalize every speech that Zambians are making. So until next time, thank you very much. And if there are any developments, we'll let you know.